Hello, and thank you for joining me today. We are continuing our study on the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And now we are at the last three gifts, the gifts that say something, the three gifts that say, th say something. And those are the gifts of prophecy, diverse kinds of tongues, and interpretation of tongues. And again, I'm going to read our foundation scripture that talks about the gifts of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12 8 through 11 says, For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills. So like we've been looking at in all these programs, these nine gifts of the Spirit are for the church, and they are all for today. Like I always say, these gifts are power tools. They are part of our arsenal of spiritual weapons that will defeat the devil's plan every time. But we have to be put into position to receive them and know that they are for each member of the body of Christ, and they are for today, you know, for the edifying of the body of Christ and to, like I said, to thwart the enemy's plan. So the gifts that we're looking today in, in this final um, uh, teaching in this series on the gifts of the Spirit are the three gifts, like I said, that say something. Now, the gift of prophecy is a supernatural utterance in, an, in a known language that is given in order to exhort and to edify the church body. Now, the purpose of this gift is for declaring forth what God wants to do in a certain situation or in a certain individual's life. There's many places and I encourage you to read in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and other places. But I want us to look at Acts 21, 8 through 11. Acts 21, 8 through 11 says, On the next day when, when, we, when we who were at Paul's companions departed and came to Caesarea and entered the house of Philip the Evangelist, who was one of the seven, and stayed with him, now this man had four virgin daughters who prophesied. And as we stayed many days, a certain prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. When he had come to us, he took Paul's belt, bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. So we see that that was the gift of prophecy in operation. And like I said, this gift is as a... As a supernatural utterance that God will give to those who are, you know, believers. And it is an, in our known language. We know what we're speaking. But like I said, it's given by God and it's to exhort, to edify the body, to encourage. And it's the purpose to show forth what God wants to do. Because God, there's many things that God wants to reveal to not only the church, but certain individuals' lives of things for them at that moment or even things in the future. So we are not to despise prophecy. Now, yes, there's a lot of, you know, weird stuff, false prophecy. I'm not talking about that. No, we are to shun false prophecy. You test everything by the word. First John 4 says, test everything, the spirits, whether they're of God. Make sure it lines up with this word. If it doesn't line up with the word, then throw it out. But true prophecy will always be confirmed by the word. If it goes against the word, then guess what? It's not true prophecy. But the gift of prophecy is, like I said, it's that supernatural utterance in a known language to exhort, to edify, and to show forth what God wants to do in an uh, individual's life or in the church in a situation. So we have to understand that prop the gift of prophecy is another gift that we need to operate in and desire. And to let the Lord use you to prophesy and accurately according to God's word. And then the next one is the different kinds of tongues or ministerial tongues. We have to understand this is a supernatural language that is unknown to the one who speaks it. But what it is, is when you are praying in tongues. Now, see, when we're baptized in the Holy Spirit, we receive our prayer language, the tongues. As it says in Mark 16, those who believe and are baptized, means the baptism of the Holy Spirit, will speak with new tongues. And then, and which we can do anytime we want to. It's not just like, oh, a lot of people think, well, you just have to, it's just at certain times. No, we can pray when we want to. You start, you know, praying in your natural language and just let, you know, your tongues flow and you start praying in that supernatural prayer language. And the thing about praying in tongues is the devil doesn't understand it. You don't know what you're speaking, but guess what? The Holy Spirit 
is you're, you're giving voice to what the Holy Spirit is wanting to speak. I mean, you're doing the speaking, but he is moving, you know, your vocal cords. And he is, you know, praying through you the perfect will of God. It's bypassing your natural mind and it's going straight to the throne room of the Father. And Satan cannot thwart that prayer. That's the only time you can pray a perfect prayer is in the spirit. Think about it. So that's a part of the diverse kinds of tongues, which also is for the purpose of the whole church body, for the ministry and for the edifying of the church. And like I said, you can pray in tongues as long as you want to. Think about it. Now, the interpretation of tongues. Well, before we, first, before we go that, let's show you in, in Acts uh, chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost when the church was born, so you can see witness of the evidence of tongues. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 4 says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So that's the Holy Spirit, the evidence of tongues. That is the new birth, being born again. And like I said, we can pray in our prayer language anytime we want to. Think about it. But the interpretation of tongues... Now, that is a supernatural showing forth by the Holy Spirit, the meaning of what was uttered in diverse tongues. And it's also for the use of edifying the body of Christ. Now, I'm not going to go there, but I encourage you to read uh, all of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and, um, uh, and other places in Acts 2, 5 through 18. So you see a deeper understanding of this. But the interpretation, now that's when you are in a corporate body and someone will stand up or even in your house church or you know, whatever group, and someone will stand up and they will speak words in tongues. I mean, it's an unknown language. But then somebody else will get up and they will interpret what this one person spoke in tongues in English. And that's the interpretation. Now, you have to understand, it's only going to be true if, you know, some, and now if somebody is praying in tongues that's supposed to be for the body and nobody interprets, then guess what? Then that person was spoke and were out of place. That's, you know, an error. So we have to understand that, too. But anytime somebody truly is coming, gets up to speak to edify the whole church body, then there will be somebody that will interpret it. If it, it lines up with, you know, the word of God and it's, you know, true, like I said, true interpretation. But that's different from just your natural, you know, pr praying in your prayer language anytime you want to. You can do that anywhere and nobody has to interpret that. Like I said, you're not speaking to yourself. Like the Bible says you are speaking to God, the mysteries of God. And like I said, that's a completely different thing. So we have to understand the difference. But think about this. When these two gifts, diverse kinds of tongues and the interpretation, are joined together, they become an excellent tool for witnessing to unbelievers. To unbelievers. Think about it. If I just read a little bit of that before we close. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 22 says, Therefore tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. But prophesying is not for unbelievers, but for those who believe. So, like I said, the prophesy is for those who believe. It's not for unbelievers. But the unbelievers need to see the sign of tongues because that will show that you are operating in the supernatural. See, that's why all these gifts, every all nine of them, are important for the body of Christ. So we have to get that in the forefront of our thinking that we are in the last of the last days and we need this world to see victory. They need to see healing. They need to see deliverance. They need to see miracles. And they're not going to if we don't stand up as the body of Christ and to put ourselves into position to be able to move in all nine of these gifts of the Holy Spirit because they're each one is for us as members of the body of Christ. But we have to receive them. We have to put ourselves in, like I said, in a position to be used by God in each one. Like it says in Corinthians, it says, desire the best gifts. Concerning spiritual gifts, don't be ignorant. No, don't be ignorant. Don't be like one of those ones who thinks they've all passed away with the apostles. No, each gift, all nine of them are for today. And we have to, like I said, put ourselves into position and to walk in each one. Like I said, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits, gift of faith, working of miracles, gifts of healings, the gift of prophecy, diverse kinds of tongues and interpretations of tongues. All of these gifts are for today. And we as believers need to desire them and to walk in them for the glory of God. Amen, and thank you for watching.